Hi guys, this is Nadia from Ivani Crafts and today I want to show you how to prong set some focal stones for a pendant. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button because I upload new stuff on a regular basis. I quite often make PDF tutorials for the videos I put up on here. They also come with kits. I have all sorts of gemstones, square half round wire and beads and all sorts of uh, nice goodies on my website. So I will pop a link below. And you can take a gander over and see if there's anything you fancy. Last but not least, we have an awesome wire wrap group, which I will also pop a link below. So um, take a look and uh, come and join us. Right, let's get started. Right, so I'm going to start with the longest wire that I have. This is for the prongs, because obviously the prongs take up a bit more wire than... The base wires so i'm using my chain knots pliers to create the initial bend and i am squeezing them together very gently so for the next step i'm using my flat nose pliers because they are got a little bit more surface area and i can use the sizing itself to use as a gauge for the prongs so i'm folding the prong over on itself like so and I am squeezing the wires together very gently. If you do this too fast and you squeeze too hard, the, the wires can kind of flip over, not flip over, kind of cross over on themselves. I'm not really sure how to describe that. And they can actually weaken the wire itself. So then I am bending this back out and make sure that the two sort of sides that are bent out are perfectly side by side and they then one side isn't longer than the other so if you want to you can mark your pair of pliers to have exactly the same size of prongs if that helps you so you just decide where you want to put the mark here i'm putting it right at the end and this is where we'll place the, the prongs every time i make a new prong and this will help me to create them all equal sized so I'm squeezing them together and then for the spacing in between, obviously the, the especially important for, for this kind of design that it's equal so that the rays that we're going to be creating will fit into one of these spaces. So this is roughly about, I think, nine millimeters in between, eight or nine millimeters. Um, you can practice a bit before to see what, what works for you. Obviously, you need to make sure that it fits around the stone. So I'm using here my flat nose pliers again to create the next bend. And remember that there will be an added millimeter or so at the top. And if it doesn't, isn't exactly the right length, you can adjust it. So don't squeeze it down straight away and just bend it and leave a little bit of a loop at the top to you so you can gauge the, the size like that. Um, and then you can squeeze it down if you're happy that... Um, the size the length is correct and then squeeze it and then obviously make sure that when you bring the wire back out it's the right length and it's parallel so then you check that it fits around the stone um obviously you can make it shorter longer whatever way so obviously just remember the less um of of spaces you have the less stars you can add because i've added a star or ray per gap basically um, so what I'm doing here is bringing in my weaving wire. So I'm just leaving a short tail towards the left. And this is the innermost wire that I've got here. And this is used to sit the stone on. So once I've added my weaving wire to that, I slide in the wire with the prongs. And I'm going to wrap around both of those wires twice. And this is just to kind of uh, bind them together. And this is going to be the first of the rays. So once I've done that, I'll slide in a third wire. And I'm going to wrap around this wire. Let's bring it in. So wrapping around both wires once. And bend them out a little bit so that you've got access to um, all of the wires. It's a bit tricky with the prong wire because I don't want to play ball really. So I'm wrapping it just for detail once around the last wire before sliding in a fourth wire. And I'm going to go around wire two, three and four once. Like so. 
and then I am wrapping it around wire four once just again as I said for the detail before sliding in wire five and then I'm going to wrap my weaving wire around wire two three four and five once like so and this is now reaching the top I could add more wires which we'll do for the next ray but right now we're just traveling back so we're stepping the wire back down around wire four and we're creating one loop around wire four before bringing it back in between wire four and five and wrapping the wire around two three and four once stepping it down to wire three we're going to put one loop around wire three we're doing exactly the opposite as what we did when we came up and then we're going to wrap around wire two and three once like so and just bend these out a bit it gets a little bit tricky when you've got a lot of wires you can use a ring clamp for that if that helps and then we're wrapping it around wire one and two twice now this you can only do with the small rays when we get to the big rays there isn't enough space in between the gaps you can make the gaps a slightly bit longer but then it won't fit around the stone so i'm only wrapping around wire one when i am doing the small rays so next we're going to move on to the bigger star the bigger ray and we again we need to try and fit it into that gap so I'm omitting wire one completely and I'm just wrap, repeating the whole process again with the remaining wires. So I'm wrapping the round wire one and two and I'm creating a small loop. Wrapping around wire two, three and four. Create a single loop. It's exactly the same process as we did before. And stepping it up, wrapping it around wire two, three, and four, and five, and then create a single loop. And as before, normally we would travel back down, but we want um, a longer ray, so we're adding in a wire, wrapping it around wire two, three, four, and five, and six in this instance, and then create a little loop. And then we bring in the last wire and as before obviously we need to make sure that we only wrap it once before traveling back so we bend the wires outwards and then we do exactly the same as we did before so um the next wire down is just a single wrap and then we need to try and make sure that the space is quite limited obviously the ray will be slightly bigger than when we did the small ray so you need to squeeze the wires together and um, it just about fits and you can as i said make the spacing a little bit longer in between um if you find that you haven't gotten the spacing right um we can squeeze them together and it just about fits but you cannot wrap around the wire number one we only do this when we do the shorter rays because there isn't enough space like so and you just continue until you reach the bottom and then you just um, finish up and we're going to complete a new section a new ray in the next gap so we keep alternating between the small and the short ray in between each weave and obviously the placing the pen makes the pendant look different the more rays you have the more intricate the pendant will be you can make it with lesser rays or more rays it's entirely up to you and um, so just play around a little bit with different designs and you know different amount of prongs closer together further apart and see um, what it looks like so entirely up to you again um, so you can decide how you want to do that so now moving back over and i am ready to create um a smaller ray once again so I'm separating out the wires and I am shifting it across and I'm starting again to create a new section so I'm just going to continue until I get to the end so I finished it up and you can see I finished on the outside of the last prong with a small um, 
rain okay so it, it is important that you finish off with the same size otherwise your pendant will be looking lopsided so what i'm doing here is i'm very gently squeezing the weaves so not only does this place the little loops that we've created sometimes get hidden by the longer wires by squeezing the wires together it shows them nicely and the detail comes out beautifully but also it strengthens and hardens the wire the weave um, you would think the wire would be quite weak but it's actually quite strong obviously as long as you don't drop it from a from a height from a distance it will distort but uh, other than that it's quite quite um, quite strong and durable so once i'm happy i'm just going to pull out uh, all of the base wires so you can reuse those um so don't you can reuse those for a different project put them aside and save them um and yeah you can just reuse them so pulling out all of them except for two wires so i've got my back wire and i have got uh my prong wire and that's all that's left over from the weave so the back wire obviously is required to seat the stone so that's what it looks like and i've got uh, my little tail left at the end here and now it's time to shape i quite like this step um, it's very satisfying to kind of shape the circle so just very gently take your time and create the shape to seat the stone in um so I like to use my fingers for that. Some people have tools, um, something round that they can use. I prefer to do it um, with my fingers. And I'm going to bring in the pair of pliers to bend the base wires at an angle. And this is just so that they line up when the circle closes. So as closest to the weave as possible to stop it from slipping and sliding. So bring it in. Uh, oops, oops, that's the wrong wrong way it needs to go out <laughs> so bend it outwards and then you can make sure that the wires actually line up once the circle closes so once i'm happy with that i am just going to form and shape it using my fingers like so can be a little bit tricky at times but just take your time and then the stone itself once you place the stone inside will actually help with the shaping process so fix it a bit and now it's time for the stone one of my favorite parts as well so fit the stone inside and this is what it looks like so this is a diamond cut uh, shape basically uh, which means it's got a little cutlet and it's fastered and you can do this with flat stones i've got my icarus tutorial which does this with a um with a round flat back um, and this tutorial was just to show you a different weave and um with a different stone so what i'm doing here is i'm shaping the prongs um it's important that you don't fold the whole prong just the tip to sit over the faceted side i'm trying to zoom in see if you can see that so you can see that the majority of the prong is straight and then just the tip is slightly bent and that way you don't hide too much of the stone quite often when you bend the prongs over and the whole prong gets bent a lot of the stone is hidden and you don't need that much um, bent over to keep the stone in place so once i'm done i'm going to close off top so as i said earlier either you can work with the full length of wire which would have been uh two and a half meters i think um, but now if you haven't done that you can add in more weaving wire so place your stone in make sure that the uh, base wires are all parallel to each other and then we're going to be using the weaving wire just to create like a block weave so basically it's once around each wire on the way down like so on my traveling app i haven't got my glasses on so i can't actually see what i'm doing so i'm weaving up and on the way down it's around two wires and uh, this is a good example of what happens when your wire breaks so when you work too much with your weaving wire it gets brittle very quickly and it can break so all i'm doing here is i'm replacing it and i'm holding it in place with my finger and i just continue weaving um as i did before and this will just leave you with a 
wire end and then you can just trim that off later on it happens quite a lot so it's a good way to practice adding in new wires if you run out of wire as well so the set on the way down it's two wraps and on the way up um it's one wrap around each wire and you just continue for a couple of wraps until you are satisfied with the look and it's only just to bond or to join all of the wires together to keep the stone in place so just do about two or three sets of this weave and i keep pushing the wire down each time so that it's nice and neat there you go you can see on the way down it's just one so you can it doesn't really matter how you do this at this point as i said this is just to join all of the wires together and that's what it looks like so far stone seated right so next is create the bell now you have options here you can use both wires on each side to create a recessed bell um, i've got a little tutorial that i have in the mini series i think that creates a recess bell which is really pretty i quite like the look or you can use the two central wires as i do here and um to see to stone like a little accent stone now ideally the base wires would be a little bit thicker to create this and the weaving wire could be thinner so 0.3 would have probably been better which is a 28 gauge um, but I've used 26 here, which makes it a little bit more difficult. So you can use a thinner wire for that if you want. Um, so I'm pre-shaping the bale here in a sort of navette shape, which is also called a marquee shape. Just make sure that it's equally sized on each side. Spend a bit of time to get the shape right so that it doesn't look lopsided. So once I've done that, I'm going to start my weave and I bend the middle wires back in place so i am what i'm doing here is i'm creating a figure of eight weaves so i'm wrapping once around the wire on the left then i'm going around the middle wires and i'm wrapping around each wire once in the middle like so before traveling back over to the other side and i'm doing two wraps around the other side like so that's it and then i'm going to come back into the middle and i'm wrapping around oh no not in distance i left it out so i'm wrapping around the outer wire once and i'm bending the middle wires out again before continuing to create a figure of eight weave so what this does basically is create a little cage for our stone to sit in so at the moment i am just zigzagging my way back from left to right with one wrap around each wire before traveling back over to the other side and this is just building up a base for our stone to sit in so just continue with that until you have enough space to seat your stone so that's what it looks like so far so next is create the shape okay so uh, this requires a little bit of practice it's actually easier when you have half round wire or square wire you can add this in um, i've just opted to use the round wire that i have so the way to do this is to create a curve in the shape of the stone the same size and the same shape that of the stone that you're going to fit in and then you need to bend out the wires to be parallel to each other again and this is just so that you can wedge the stone in place so it's important that you don't just create a curve on the outside of the stone you also need to make sure that you make a curve upwards to allow for the projection of the stone to sit into that little recess and that's what it looks like so far so once you're happy with the shape i'm going to try and show you from the side so you can see it's sort of a dome a domed look so that's what it looks like and then i bring in my diamond cut stone so now this is obviously a diamond cut so it's a little bit more tricky than it would be with a flat back because obviously it's got a point 
so I'm sure going to show you a flat back here and this would be obviously much easier because the, the back's flat as you can see here and the, there's a dome for the wire to grasp onto but each have got their pros and cons in terms of you know um, of usability so I like them both I just wanted a bit of sparkle so I decided to go with a with a diamond cut so what are we doing here now is we bring those wires back into place so I'm folding them back together and I'm lining them up and it's going to be a little bit fiddly at this point until the the wires are closed and we unwoven into the design so I'm just going to repeat exactly what I did before we did the um, the recess for the, the stone to sit in we're wrapping around once in the middle wires like so I'm going to bring it across and I'm going to wrap around the second wire all the while I'm keeping my finger over the stone to make sure that nothing shifts and moves until everything is um, set and, and woven into place so once these are attached I'm going to go to the outside keep my finger over the wire to prevent it from slipping up which is especially important when you reach the halfway mark and the, the the bail sort of narrows down again your wire tends to slip so it's very important to keep your finger over the wire when you weave so you would just continue uh, until you reach the top now if you actually look at the little inset on the left here you'll see that the weave i've done on the left is slightly different so instead of doing one wrap around each wire in the middle i've done one wrap around each wire uh, and then on the way back it was one wrap around both wires this is just so that um, it looks slightly different you can do it with just one wrap around each wire all the way up to the top I just thought it looks a little bit nicer but at the time I was doing this I just used um, I used one wrap around one wire so you can decide however you want it so just continue until we get to the top so that's what it looks like i'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see and you can see the stone is seated nicely because you kept your finger over it and everything was nice and tight so the next step is to bend the bail forward a bit so that the pendant hangs underneath it and it doesn't look lopsided so i'm using my fingers here to shape it and very gently not to put too much pressure on the back of the stone otherwise it will just pop out even if your wire is seated you can put it back in and then bend the wire of the top so it's not too tragic but um, sometimes it can happen so if your bail is slightly too short we're going to add a little bit of a brick weave at the bottom um, as you can see in the little insert here so mine was a bit short so I added in the same sort of weave we had when we closed off the, um, the stone setting so next obviously there's nowhere we can wrap the base wires around so we're going to use the weaving wire to wrap the bail to the actual frame itself so i'm just on each side wrapping the wires around um before that i'm doing the extension here with the brick weave so it's really simple exactly like we did in the beginning it is uh, once around two wires on the way up and then once around each wire on the way down so that's just a very simple brick weave and once we're satisfied with that we're just going to close off um, the wires and we're going to trim them off so you can see here I'm satisfied with that and what I'm doing next is bringing the weaving wire around the frame on the side here and this will tie the bail together to prevent it from opening at a later stage so I'm just feeding it through and I'm pulling it tight just be sure not to put too much pressure otherwise the wire breaks and we're just going to work our way back and attach it on the other side and once you're happy it's nice and tight we're going to trim off these wires I mean if you could use those wires I'm always reluctant to cut wires off because I tend to use them for details um, and other things but in this case I decided I'm just going to trim them off you may decide otherwise and all I'm doing here is obviously they would get 
hooked on things so we're going to tuck them away and I'm using my fine tipped chain nose pliers and um, these are fab I got these off eBay and um, they were like five bucks or so and really cheap and these are my favorite pair of pliers to date apart from my sort of expensive ones these are fabulous um so I'm bending these in and make sure that everything is tucked out of the way and last but not least we're going to be adding some accent detail some beads um you can put them wherever you want in this case i've decided there was a little bit of a gap at the top so i decided to fill that gap with um with some beads so i'm just positioning the wire you can feed it through the frame so that it comes out just um above the the prong on the right so that the beads sit nice and flush so pulling this tight and make sure that everything is hidden away and then i'm going to add beads like so to sit above you don't have to do this but i quite liked the uh, the added detail there's different ways to do it um obviously these are going to be slightly loose so i'm going to use my wire to stitch it in place basically which is um i'm wrapping my weaving wire in between the beads and then in and out of the frame and lastly i'm going to if you weave like mine here is a little bit untidy you can make it look better by pushing the weave in around the bell um, and this just makes it look a whole lot tidier and a little bit more recessed and then lastly obviously cut off the wires and that's it i hope you enjoyed this and thank you so much for watching obviously don't forget to hit the subscribe button because i upload new stuff on a regular basis i would absolutely love it if you could visit me on my social media i've got instagram tiktok facebook obviously you know about my youtube channel um, come and join us in our wire wrappers group which is called uh, wire wrappers and metal smiths worldwide on facebook we're a fun bunch do, um, we do uh, challenges every month and it's an absolutely all around awesome group with awesome people um, and as i said i have got all sorts of goodies on my website so i will pop a link below that's it for me